Hello, welcome to um, me, Bajingo, playing a game that you don't see very much of anymore. Uh, Trade Empires. You don't see much of it because it doesn't really work anywhere. <laughs> Since the only way I managed to get this to work was by finding my old PC and loading it up on here. Ooh, that noise means that uh, Zeus has finished processing. Anyway, it's a fun, good old fashioned sort of game um, where you just take stuff from, others play from one place to another place and uh, make a lot of money on the way. Um, this was made by Frog City, and I believe in 1999. Frog City has since uh, gone bust, by the way, long time ago. Uh, and you can't get this for love of the money. I'm almost tempted to shut up and not do a, um, a commentary for this, because... Um, just for the gameplay aspect. Because you don't, you don't see much of it anywhere. Um, not much of it on YouTube, not much of it... Yeah, because they can't buy it in the shops, and if you can buy it, you can't get it to run. It doesn't work on modern PCs, it doesn't work on my laptop anyway. Anyway, you go through various parts of history, um, building trade empires, as the name suggests. Um, it gets increasingly more difficult, uh, and not because there's more AI families. Unfortunately, the AI in this game is terrible. And all the opponents do is just get in the way. They don't, they don't even try to compete as such. They just, they're just there. Ooh, that's a good, good bit of trumpet. A little grandiose for a trading game, maybe. Anyway, I'm going to start at the start and then take it away. So I started in Shang Dynasty Diner. This is pretty much, you get to pick which colour you are. And in other games, you get you pick your family name and where you start. Uh, this one, you're the Tang family, whether you want to be or not. Um, we start. Um, Dill Light doesn't work on my laptop, but there's a problem with the graphics card, so it makes it all really slow and juddery. Um, so, never mind. This is, this is it. This is um, Shang Dynasty China, and... What you do is you create towns by building a market and then build it all rice. Customers must find products in the market when they want to buy, so make sure the extra money and rice are waiting to be purchased at all times. Huh, thank you. So this is the market. You don't actually build the houses yourself, you just sort of place them nearby and gives you a nice name, um, appropriate to where it's placed. And there's some rice, so I've got another one down there. I call that Southern Zhengzhou. Where's Northern Zhengzhou? Nobody knows. Put a trail across there like that. And boom, you've got your first trade route. It gets a little more complex, complex than this, but this is pretty much a tutorial. Um, mission? Hardly. And it's got a wonderful sandbox feel to it. It's like you can, can build up an empire if one. You get a score at the end of it. Scores on the doors. Um, He's lost. Well, of course, it's 1700 BC. I've got 7055. To get to 75,000, to achieve the Merchant Prince rank, uh, which is, you know, really up there. I think. Yeah, wealth includes treasury, merchants, transports, commodities, and the production buildings you own at the end of the game. And on some missions, you get special points for, like, building cities in certain regions. And then, and like, you get regions and you go from one to the other, and that's where the music comes in. There's no music in this one. Unless I've decided to add some in afterwards. Um, because music comes in just the once, and you move from one region to the other. And then the silence the rest of the way through. So if you've got one where it's just the one region, you know, you're out of luck, pal. Um, the music's in your head. Anyway, um, so we build a route. We'll call this one food, because that's what's in it. Select the market, we we'll go from Zhuzhou to Jingzhou, Southern Jingzhou. You take two millets, you take two rice. Boom! Hire a merchant, um, they get very skilled, they get more skills the more money they make. Um, as it happens, I don't think I've ever used pathfinding because I always build trails from place to place. As you get more complex transporters like horses and mules, they like. Um, Caravans horizon and roads, so that's just immaterial. Well, what I do is pioneering. 
the speed of travel across the trails is enhanced. And um, we'll hide up there. Right there. And embark on that route. The interface is actually quite clunky on this. There he goes. There he is. Chenung. So he'll sit there, he'll buy some millet. And he'll wander over. Because you get how buying and selling works. I don't know quite what I'm describing it to you. Ooh, that quite getting that last rice field in there. It's beyond the wit of them to like move a little bit further that way. So he's now trying to sell the millet that isn't there. And there's rice there that is there already. So, there we go. That noise means some houses appeared. And there they are. And that's a braying donkey. Um, while we're waiting, I might set up another trade route. So let's say we've got some rice down there. This is the region map. This is quite useful. And look at all that millet up there. Look at their neck. Um, yes, please. What I might do, actually, while we're still quite early on in the game, I'll put a market here besides these two rice here. Hwang Pi, so to speak. And put the trail across there. Nice bridge, lovely. And what I will do is I'll change the route, food, so you can go to Hwang Pi and do exactly the same thing. Oh, that's loud. I've got no volume control and put the, like, um, headphone in my ear. And that ping went right through. It's very loud, very loud indeed. And use the extra. You know, millet fields, what we'll do. Um, is there a way of getting three? Yes. But it kind of locks me in. If I put one there, I can just about get three there as well. We'll try there for Anyang. We'll trail down there, across there like that. Lovely. Dead proud of that. And we'll have a route and we'll call it Food 2. Because that's what it is. Foof. A lot of typing in this game and a lot of selecting from menus. They've not quite got the grasp of the idea of GUI. What I would like to see though is a Trade Empires 2. Something like this, but you know, a little bit updated. Perhaps a more, in more intuitive interface. Actually works on, you know, compatible with modern PCs. Bigger maps, an AI that works. Um, that's pretty much everything. I can't think what else I want. Because mm, it's, it's kind of a little bit like Velo Tycoon 3 took a little bit on that on board, but you only get to control like railways, which do feature in this game actually, much later on. Um, call that food too. Oh, an owl. Famine release. Now, these are the receive kickbacks when selling foodstuffs. Don't know how to particularly call it kickbacks. Right. Oh, they just come with like a bonus. Oh, that's very slow. Come on, hurry up. Uh, while I'm waiting for that to happen, I can have a look see where else I can go. Some more rice here. I think what you can do is like. Bring all the rice up from one direction over here, and all the rice over there, all the millet to Anyang, and then just like trade. So what occurs, like somebody picking up some rice from Zhuzhou that has been trade taken from Hangpi, or from Ganzu, I think it is down here. I played this mission a bit. <laughs> I used to play it a lot when I was young, but I've never quite got the grasp of old, older missions. Older missions? No. You know what I mean, the more difficult mission. So rather than taking the rice all the way from down here, it's all the way up there. He sits around with three rice, waiting to like, sell them, and then a merchant comes along, buys them, takes them up there. And you get like a... A chain. A supply chain, you might call it. So you could make quite... Ow! Right here. <laughs> That's going to be a common thing with this. Weaving, uh, advanced bits new, your opponents to buy or build weaver workshops and weave silk cloth from the silk supplied by your silkworms. So that's a lot of silk in one sentence. A sibilant sound, silk. 
Clothes demand to bind bullings and other structures. Uh, presence of market encourages growth of sound. Cloth is important and consistent in need for your customers. And is it difficult to succeed without investment in the cloth economy? Sold. Especially for, that's cheap that is for technology. Was it 400? You can get several of those. So there's a weaver. Uh, I believe there's some silk nearby. Use the term nearby loosely. That's more like it. Ideally, you want to go for somewhere that has the production building and. Muslim Jai Shan. But I'll purchase that. And then. The pathway. There, go across there. And what we'll do now is have a chap that sells silk basically everywhere. Starting at Northern Jiang Cheng. Oh yeah, you get to upgrade the transporter, so you have to go into all your routes and then update them. It's very pernickety, this game. But I like it. I like it a lot. Um, so rather cheekily, we'll sell some at Huangpi. And we'll sell some at Zhuzhou. And we'll sell some at Southern Zhengzhou. Um, actually, what I might do is have silk one and silk two. So we'll sell, take three from Northern Zhengzhou, find P Zhengzhou. Because what I'm thinking is that Anyang won't get any. Ah well. I'll bring the price load the price up. So you, you you can go from all from the same place, like you could get all your millet from here, but that's make millet very expensive. So you have price mechanics. This is what I like about the game, it's quite detailed. So you have demand supply, demand, demand pushes the price up or down. You've got a base price. It's a bit loud. Um I bet you can't hear it actually, because I've probably altered the volume, so every time there's a sheep barring or something like that, and I'm going, ah, uh, you're wondering, what's the problem? I can't hear it. Um, you see, the price of millet and rice is very low now, which means population's rising. Raw silk, there's a demand of three there, so rice, that's not going really to be a satisfied, we not doing that. Actually, I am. So just thought that's going to waste. Take it to Hang P. Um, don't have to worry about Hang P. That's got all the silk it needs. It's not going to be a very profitable route, but at least it means that Anyang gets something. So you go to Anyang. You go to Xiao. Xu Xiao. Northern Jai Sheng. Xu Xiao. Anyang. Southern Jai Xiao. It's, it's a route. Just make sure they follow with the new orders. It's the merchant roster will find. In fact, I've not even started it yet. So we'll get a new chap. Some price gouging. That means if there's a demand already, he knows how to really coin it in. And this is it, it's simple, it doesn't require a long video to explain. You know, you have to go into depth, there's nothing to ramble on about. This is pretty much it. You can get more commodities and more, you have demand building so you can, that, like, wash stuff, like silk and bronze and stuff like that. Um, There you go, he takes that three there. Oh, got to go into the old, into my roots now and upgrade. And the mules. And the other route through two. And then save that there like that. Good. Um, I can't see how much money I've got because I've got the fraps indicated just where I need it to be. 
Um, I think I've got seven. Is that seven hundred ninety-three, <laughs> or is it seven thousand nine hundred and something? Probably the former. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the former, very much so. I started off at eight thousand. I don't know where the money's gone. It's a good idea to pause the game while playing the strategy. Thank you, game. Oh yeah, if the price gets too low, uh, these production buildings just stop reducing. So as soon as the price gets to like uh, 16, it'll just stop. <laughs> Let them starve for a bit. I can't afford the advanced caravan slide. That will graze all your um, paths to roads if you were to invest. It gives you horses. See, so there's some money being made here. I guess check out for me each of your your chaps is making. Um, he's not making much at all, but he also has to have to buy the mules, I suppose. <laughs> they're, not they're, not, they're not fancying the silk cloth that we've done yet, so what he's doing is he's gradually bringing down the price and the demand's gradually going up. But at some point, like he's playing demand curve, that point will be reached where demand will reach supply and the price will be established. As it happens, it's below base price. They're probably not below the price of purchase. That's a lot of sheep. Oh, come on, buy it. I'm in debt at the moment. Uh, yes. have a couple more cities established somewhere around here. I could take mill it from there and then rice from there. In fact, that'd be a good route because I could bring rice back and bring a bit of silk. Um, oh, those are two good cities. Uh, some millet there, some rice there. So you get to sort of decide how much, how complex you want to make your, your trading system. Like it's all up to you how many cities you have, but they all need supplying, otherwise they'll shrink. And the more cities you have, the more opportunities there is to sell stuff. As it happens, these two houses here are buying a phenomenal amount of silk. It's currently trading at 544, 42, 41, 550, 539, it's, it's like a Dutch auction. auction. Have you ever wondered how like a raw deal the Dutch get in uh, the English vernacular? Um, yeah, things like Dutch courage, Dutch auction, um, Dutch oven, Dutch. Is it Dutch courage? I have said Dutch courage. Oh, he's finally making a profit. Um, and there's other thing. There's another one as well. I can't remember what it is now. Um, yeah, they get, they get a bad press. It's because of the formation of a lot of what we know as the English language around about the 17th century. When of course. Um, the Dutch were the great uh, commercial rivals of the time. Uh, great naval and commercial rivals. Um, so much so, I think De Ruyter, a uh, Dutch admiral, managed to sail up the Thames and managed to shell parts of London. So, you know, good for them. Up oh, the Dutch. Mm, not right now, because I've got an ambitious scheme. What would usually happen in a multiplayer scenario is that if you don't buy that, like they'll go around like a like an auction, proper auction, not a Dutch auction. Um, and they'll, they'll offer it to the richest player. The richest player says no, they go to the second richest player. Um, this would be quite a fun game to play, I think, as part of the multiplayer. The trouble is, it's, it's be very easy to like sabotage your opponents. Because if you were to do that and go through there, you actually demolish the houses. <laughs> Which would be like, you, you know, it's just the profit of your opponents. It's fine, don't worry about it. And we'll mark it up here. See, now I've got another two cities. So we'll have food three. So, Jai Shan. Three rice and then... Eastern Shanghui. 
Where's Western Shankly or Shankly itself? Nobody knows. Um, I don't want to try the Here we go. So that's new merchant. That's very expensive. Oh, I'm in the money now. 1,448. Through this, with animal husbandry, basically goes quicker when you used um, animals, which most of, the, most of this game is around about the time when, you know, everything was horsepower, literally. And then we'll have a silk too, which will go from northern Jiaxiang. to Eastern Shankui. to Frank P. Oh, and Jai Shang. Now we have to do some marketeering. Marketeering just creates demand. Most to persuade people that they want to buy what they don't really need. That'll do. So he can go, oh, don't need another one. Blimey. And he can go and sell two. So what we've got now is six cities, more or less adequately supplied. We've got Nurse, uh, Xinjiang, Zhao. And what great happens is like the more places you just supply, you just find money just sort of rolling in. I mean, what's he doing? He's going to buy three lots of silk that are just waiting there. <sighs> no wonder I'm not making a profit. <laughs> it's, I've taken on that loss of that 3,108. But it's okay because it'll be made up by these chaps selling that. Th so he'll buy silk plus the 270, sell it, say it as usual, for 543. That's, you know, that's 100% markup. Lovely. Um, I suppose they ought to buy. Buy caravans, right? You go around the greater roads for seven, 741. Bing. Lovely. And then you need to build caravans, right, outside all of your cities. So it gets it progressively more expensive to supply places. Some weight. I see these bought all of those. So they've got rice, they've got millet, and now they're going to get silk. They, they want for nothing, these people. That should grow very quickly. It's trying to find balance as well because if you're too eager to supply houses and encourage growth, you're of course not making a profit. But if you're too eager to make a profit, um, Towns won't grow, and that's your further profit, future profit. Mm, 780. Might invest in a bit of infrastructure then. Well, this is like a libertarian society. I have to build all the infrastructure myself. The government's done nothing so far, and it's <laughs> reaping the reward of all these cities. I guess it's like a, a theme of all my videos so far. Almost all of them I mentioned to libertarianism somewhere. <laughs> I said it's into Mazoo's one. Tell a lie. That one was more incest, more or less. Um, there was a reason for it. I was talking about Greek gods. Ooh. No, thank you. That bit lets you build a drake, but there's no pull but it upgrades your mules to drake horses. There's no point, because... I've not got the caravan surprise for it yet. There we go, there, 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 and one there. This is what most of the actual game time feels like, just like going around in different places. The rest of the map was a bit more interactive. The part of the tutorial actually tells you that if you want to find out where something is, just right click lots of times like that and it'll flash. <laughs> That's like Cheers game. Um, that's not really a feature. I'm going to upgrade all these to horses, which are like mules, but quicker, more expensive. I 
don't think there's any real point in going for anything other than the quickest, best transport around. Pause. Save that. Food two, horse, lovely. Food, horse, lovely. Let you watch all that all that money just disappear nicely. I also need to buy, don't I? Sculpting. And out of nowhere you'll notice there's loads of jade. And um, jade carvers. That are in are nowhere near each other. It would have been useful to have like a jade carver there. Never mind. So what I could do is one, two, three, four, five, six. Just do the same again, I think. Two roots of jade for one, two, three. And then one, two, three. Look at the northern and the southern one. Three, four, five, six. Yeah, that works. Um, and there. Uh, and laser games, you get like river, like boats along the river. And that's a very efficient way of getting goods across. As has always been the case. I mean, transporting ships by, by ships is just fantastic compared to like land truck. Even today, I'm pretty sure like, ships are the best way of getting like bulk across. The only trouble with ships is it's, it's not very accessible to like anywhere that isn't coastal. Mm. Across there, like that, lovely. I'll set a root up, call it Jade One. Imaginative with the names of my roots. <laughs> so there's Northern Kishan. The horse taking three jade will go to Kishan. Regular Kishan. It will leave with three jade idols. They'll then go to Southern Jinja and leave with two jade idols. It will then go to Anyang. Actually, no, I've got another plan. I'll go to Zhuzhou. With one, then to Anyang, with none, then to Southern Kishang. But what I'm going to do is build a bridge across the river, so it's going in a big circle. Ooh. But I can't afford it. And I can't afford the merchant either. I was only short by about 30. Now I'm very short. You can't take out loans in this game as well. I think it's missing... If it had, had a chance, if Frog City had, had a chance to like develop this game into something a bit more... It has the, the edge of like... It's got potential written all over it, but it was lost potential unfortunately. How much do merchants cost? Oh, you can only have 30 minute merchants total as well, so there will come a point in one of these missions where I reach my maximum, and how much money is he making? And how much money is he losing? That roughly makes up, doesn't it? Mm. Well, what you find is, because he's stopped working, these silk farmers have uh, got nothing to sell, so they've shut down. So they're offering their price, their wares, for 60, when it should be 120. He's making silk cloth for 270, which should be 540. And this chap here is like, just coining it in. Um, can't afford a new merchant, so what I'll do is I'll spend a bit of time. Uh, game speed 1, on G2. Marketplaces are like trading posts, but have a bigger radius. Allows for more production buildings within them, and allows for some more houses to be built in them as well. So where should I get this tree from? I don't want to get it all from one mine, because that will make it quite expensive. But I also don't want to go all the way over there, to go all the way over there, to go all the way over there. 
Hmm. I could. I don't, I don't like doing this because it feels a little bit like you shouldn't. But you can build your own. I mean, it's more expensive. But for a thousand, I could just build the jade carvers by like between those two jade mines there. And build a market across there like that. And then the jade carver, he's going to get loads of cheap jade. And then the chap just comes up, picks them up, takes them everywhere he needs to go. In the meantime, I have to wait for the wait for the money to build up. Come on! Oh, we have, this is the date. Uh, you have no idea like how fast it's going down. Um, and you don't know how when, when, when the episode ends unless you like look at the bottom while your mouse is hovering over there. So that's seventeen hundred BC to eleven hundred BC. Seems like quite a long time, but look how fast the years go by. Come on, give me some money. Could do with these people buying some silk. What are you doing? Mm, that's better. Not particularly uh, profitable. But this is the slow, steady stuff. Oh yeah, I was going to buy a merchant as well, wasn't I? Come on, I'm not supplying jade anywhere, but when I do, the prices will be great. I don't think I have one anyway. Food, silk, food, silver. Food. Yeah. Can't afford it. You notice that the merchants get progressively more expensive. Oh, there we go. On its reputation, it only matters when there's more than one player. So I don't know what that's even on there. So he can go and do J1. Very nice. So that's what happens when you get more money. I think it's a bit, are we getting a thousand, two thousand, something like that. You get a second skill. You see how much each of these people have made. And I'm still short of money. Oh, hello, that's more like it. So we'll have my own jade carver over here. Pathway goes there to the to there. Depot there and well, that'll do. So Jade Two, quite a bit simpler. It just goes to the Eastern Ganzu, pick up three Jade Idols, drop off one a Jai uh, one a Zhuzhou. I think. Yeah. And one at uh, Hang P. Lovely. We'll get a chap in there that knows animal That's quite useful actually. Off you go. How's Dan looking on the scores? Scores on the doors? Um, apprentice Merchant. <laughs> I'm actually doing significantly worse than if I'd not done anything at all. Yes! <laughs> now we're talking. The fact is, I'll be struggling for money from most of the game, and at some point it'll all just come rolling in. Um, I'm posting that. He's not he's not getting the profits of my hard labour. This independent merchant. Who does he think he is? Right, Chang Shin. He's made a huge loss so far, but look at the demand on Jade Tools. 
You make a two hundred pound profit. Once he's done. And again there. There you go. And then this last one is all profit. Boom. And he picks up three and does it all again. It's only quite therapeutic about watching it all take place. Good lord, I'm a thousand in debt. I'm not quite sure how I managed that. Hold on a second. Jade one, jade one. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I've got two merchants on the same route. Hold on a second. Then let's, uh, I'd like to see the correlation uh, between like your performance when you're not doing a let's play and your performance when you are doing a let's play. Because I swear I'm better at this than, <laughs> this game than I'm messing on. See the money's come back. A minor hiccup. And rather than oversupplying three cities and not supplying any at all, I'm going to equally distribute the, the J's this time. And that way profit lies. Theoretically. Oh, go on, just buy the things. By an early harvest, harvest because so that these food boots that I've got going are going to be updated again. They're now carrying double what they did at the start of the mission. Two. Build like a supply city, like these these like rice here could go to Jishang just to like judge it up. <laughs> right, you know that that roots. <laughs> this is the tedious part of the game. Food to wheel dray. Save. Food to. Wheel dray. Save. Food three, wheel dray, save. That comes in handy there, the four slots instead of three when you've got bronze. Because it requires, copper requires two copper ore, and then often the bronze vessel will require two bronze smelt, bronze ingots. So having a, something that can hold three in a world that's divisible by two is only half as effective. Um, well, I, I think I've got a decent start on this. Um, we're currently 1700. 1700. Hold on a second. Yeah, about halfway through the mission now. And halfway through the map, and halfway through all the resources that we can provide. So, what I'm going to do is buy the tech masonry. You'll notice that you get. Demand buildings pop up. Like, you get demand buildings in the form of dwellings. Those are the biggest earners. You also get things like palaces, which often appear in the middle of nowhere. Like there. 
They're quite useful. You build them, you don't get any benefit from them, but what they do is drive up the price by being a constant source of demand. So if I had to build one in Zhuzhou, silk would not get to that price because they would always, the, the palace would be buying it as well as the paupers. So over the long haul, um, you make more money. You also... what's the other one? There's also a temple, I think, isn't there? Oh, over in Anyang. Which likes jade idols and silk cloth. Actually... No, it's too far away. And you can't demolish things and rebuild them. Um, another fault of this game. But never mind. So it still wasn't exactly going cheap there. So it's like if you'd built two of each in each city, I think you would make a lot of money. In fact, I might, I might build one in, in Juzhou. I won't build one in Juzhou. <laughs> I don't think it even adds to your score at the end of the game, because it totals up your assets, but you basically just donate it to the government. Mm, is the Shang Queen getting any um, Jade Idols? Let me just have a quick check before I go on and do other things. Almost second. Yeah, I thought so. Eastern Shanghai is not getting any. Um, this bit hasn't been developed much yet. I don't know why not. If I build there and supply the palace and get some rice up, I'll actually build a city there. So that could be quite a nice little earner. Ah, and some silk there as well. So I've got some silk coming in from there, some rice coming in from there, millet, jade, all the good stuff. But that's for the next episode. There's a cliff, cliffhanger for you. Something to look forward to. And I will see you next time when we'll finish off the rest of this map and move on to something that isn't a tutorial mission. Yes!